hope you guys are doing super, super fantabulous. I wanted to do a special greeting for you guys this month because I have been so far behind on videos. I took some time for healing, guys. I'm rested. I'm feeling great. Tapping into new gifts that I'm getting and new ideas. And it's been a blessing and a journey. And I just want to tell you guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for being patient with me and sending me all your nice little letters and stuff or like emails. I'm old school. I said letters, right? So thank you. Big, big hugs. Lots and lots of love, guys, coming your way. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an update of what's going on astrologically. We have quite a few things, like not this week, but next week, like the 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, like all these little notes I got right here. So on the 14th, Jupiter is entering into Scorpio, sextile Pluto into Capricorn. And what does that mean for you? It's going to be a time of challenges, like all the challenges you've been facing. How are you going to use those to transform? How are you going to use those to change? So that's going to be a big thing coming up. The next day is Mercury retrograde going direct. Oh, yes, big baby yes it's going to be in the right way <laughs> so don't worry it's still gonna be throwing us some shade we've got the shadow phase going on on the 16th we have a new moon in aries and this is going to be about i-n-d-e-p-e-n-d-e-n-t do you know what i mean yes little boosty we do okay it is time to put our independent goals and go at it with the force of the ram okay so we had all that energy this month and uh, ram energy is hardcore baby but now the moon is bringing it in and it's a new moon so this is about initiating that change and doing new things on the 17th <laughs> big daddy saturn is going retrograde baby in capricorn until the 6th of september and this is about discipline where where are the areas that you need to see change what are you going to do and how are you going to do it it's very important get that shit in order <laughs> and on this on the 20th the sun enters into taurus all right and the 22nd Big bad Pluto's gonna go retrograde, baby. Where in Capricorn? So think about what Capricorn represents. Think about what Pluto represents. Look at it where it's in your chart. I'm not an astrologist. Please don't ask me to, to decipher because I can't. I'm, I'm learning, I'm learning, but I can't, all right? So with that being said, I tapped into the collective. I will be doing something new in your videos, guys. They are gonna come out in sections. I finally had some assistance and I have some, some help so I can knock out a few videos at a time, but then I gotta take a break and I gotta remember meditate and I got to tap back into my to my core center okay so you will be getting a channeled message before your video not one of these but a specific channeled message that I asked what does this sign need this month what is their focus and you'll get that along with the mind body and soul as well as what the hell is going on all right with a tarot now I had two cards that wanted to come out for the beginning. I used my pendulum. I made sure that this is how it was going to be. And the card that came out from the Sacred Power deck by Anna Stark, okay, my, my fave, is change. So take a moment, and I want you to look at what he's walking away from. There's on one side, I always say it's the root chakra, all that red. And on the green, that's your heart. And in the center, that's all that blue, right? It's your voice. It's time to speak up. The changes are coming. But are you willing to make those changes? And I think that's what Saturn and Pluto are going to really make us focus in on this month, is are we going to do it, and are we going to do it with the tenacity of Taurus, okay? So what are you willing to change? You see that full moon right there on the 30th? of april we will be having a full moon in scorpio it's gonna be all about what do you want and what you're gonna do to get a big baby <laughs> all right so change is change is coming when i asked what's gonna guide us through the change i use the native spirit deck love this okay and it was from our ancestors what i want you to notice is the brightness in there that is your solar plexus energy coming through but how do our ancestors talk to us they talk to us through our dreams and mine have been off the chain and for all my little clients i've been dreaming about me baby i've been dreaming about you too we connected <laughs> and it's so cool to read your emails and your text messages like oh my gosh i dreamt you too so it's great that i have this connection with you guys and i'm so so thankful but ancestors speak to us through number sequences feathers um, songs on the radio, animals. And so be open and be willing to kind of put the puzzle pieces together because sometimes my guides talk to me in riddles and I have to like be like, what, what does that mean? Like, I don't know. And once I sit with it for a while, I meditate on it, sometimes write it down, look at it and, and meditate again, then it hits me. So it's about being open to these energies, guys. So be ready for change. Be ready for good things and be ready to receive what you've been asking for. Ask not like you haven't got it. Ask like it's yours. I thank you now for what I have. 
that good things are coming, guys. And if we come together and we believe it together, it's going to happen. So I hope April's a wonderful month. And let's get to your reads. Hello, Virgo. It's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your tarot scope for April, big baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love. High fives and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. What's up, Virgos? I hope you guys are doing super, super fantabulous, and I'm sending you lots and lots of love. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to join my energy with you. Hopefully, you'll hit that like, that share, and maybe even subscribe. So, with that being said, guys, just know that this is a general read, okay? Apply it where it fits in, and um, also, if you're interested in a read, hit me up at arianaluciano at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. So, talking about the channeled messages that I got, and yes, this is for Sun, Moon, and Rising, okay? Just in case you're wondering, I know how y'all can be very analytical, very, very to the point. So, I'm going to tell you, Virgos, when you have two chakra cards come out of something <laughs> that are from two separate decks, I think, I think it's time to get our chakras aligned, okay? <laughs> However, your channeled message... It's coming from your ancestors. I really think that your guides are really trying to talk to you. So the first card that fell out was the ancestor of knowing. Someone close to you is deceiving you, even maybe yourself. What you lying about, Virgo, all right? Now, this is also going to be revealed that the truth is going to be revealed to you when you see the owl, okay? Um, you have the ability to see what others don't see. You have a sense of knowing. Even the otter in the background is like saying, bitch, I wish you would, okay? I'm going to cut you. He's, I even give him, I like to give him the Mike Tyson voice because I'm going to show you why. Look, it's like he's like super big and he's got these little arms. Not that Mike Tyson has little arms because he'd probably kill me in like one grip. But I'm just saying, just like he'd have a Mike Tyson voice, that's all. Anyways, the owl is here to let you know that you need to let go of an area of your life that is no longer working for you. Your guides have been bringing you that message, so it's time to really look at what's not been working. And this can be relationship, this can be freaking anything. If it ain't working, let it go. And I know, easier said than done, but I think that's what Mercury's been trying to shake you up about. Now, the fact that you got two ancestors in your read, I'm telling you, your guides are working overtime. Now, the rhino is showing up to tell you to trust your inner wisdom and don't just look at appearances. The thing about the owl totem is they're able to extract secrets. And I feel like you know stuff. You ultimately know what needs to happen. But it's like, eh, it looks really good. It tastes really good. It feels really good. I want to keep doing it. Okay? Now, but this is also remembering who you are and what you're about. Have you forgotten or lost your way? Do you feel alone? Because this is exile. This is helping you work on self-worth, self-understanding, and self-love. It's time to rebuild you, reconnect, restore, and strengthen you to find a new way home. So I kind of feel like the owl is coming in at the time of darkness to kind of help you and protect you. And the rhino is using his unicorn, his big horn in the front, to get rid of all the shit that's in the way. Okay, so I kind of feel like your guides are really fighting for you and they really want you to get this together. Okay, that's what's coming in for you this month. Nothing too strong, but it is um, letting you know that your guides are all around. Now... Going into your power animal, you have the otter, okay? Like I said, the Mike Tyson otter. He ready to box. He's got his arms up because mama otter don't play, okay? She is about the realness. So, the otter represents a freedom and feminine goddess energy. The fact that it's feminine goddess energy and we have the goddess of 10,000 names, damn it to hell, male or female, you need to treat yourself like a goddess and own your, um, what is it, your divine feminine energy. This is accepting things for what they are and allowing things to be. Being playful, trusting your psychic awareness, Playfulness comes out like three or four times on my notes, so it's going to be really important that you make more time for play. Also, I like to use the scenario of the airplane. You know when you have to put the mask on first? All right, Mama Bear, you got to put it on first before you can go and help everyone. What does that mean? Self-care. Take care of yourself before you're out there doing everything and every anything for everybody. This is time for you. She is the supreme symbol of motherhood. The otter is. Why? Because they're awesome parents. So if this is where you're wondering, like, am I doing a good job at being a parent? This is where I'm going to ask you, what is a good parent? 
and be ready because there is going to be a very awesome healing with tarot all about parenting mommy and me even about how to utilize reiki healing during those sessions with your kids and with yourself because we got to take care of ourselves guys before we we can go take care of others is your cup empty fill it up so that you can pour into others basically that's the energy that's coming in what i'm really getting with um otter is emotional issues are done with you see how he's out of the water? They didn't show him swimming in the water. He's out and he's on dry land and he's getting grounded and he's drying off. He, almost like he's looking at the situation and saying, you know what? I got to figure this out before I get back into these emotions. Okay? So this might be one of those months where you have to balance these chakras and figure out what it is so that you can jump back into those things that are very emotional for you. Okay? Mentally. Energy balance. You are your mind is screaming out to you. Something is out of balance. Something isn't right. Something needs to get back together. You see the the guy in the background doing some Pilates or some yoga. The other guy is meditating. Take some time for yourself. Also in that card, pay attention to which color is really sticking out to you. Red is your root chakra. Orange is your sacral. Yellow is your solar plexus. The green is your heart chakra. The blue is your throat. Purple is anja. Indigo is your crown. Figure out which one you're most drawn to and then Google, okay, because I'm not going to spend 20 minutes telling you what it is. Google what what it is that is to heal that area the root chakra deals with being grounded sacral deals with pleasure enjoying life and creativity cellar plexus deals with the i am having confidence being brave making decisions green is your heart space are you open to love or are you close to it blue is that throat chakra are you speaking your truth are you listening when you need to your anja is your third eye that purple one is about trusting your intuition and the indigo is the crown chakra that connects you to the the divine okay now physically is the goddess of isis is coming the goddess of ten thousand names every time i see this card i think about and i will walk ten thousand miles and i will walk ten thousand more y'all remember the song anyways that always comes into my mind but what i see here is all these entities into one you are a person who are wearing too many hats you might be the lover, the fighter, the giver, the taker, the martyr, the teacher, the mother, the daughter. And it's all these names that you have, all these responsibilities that are all wrapped up into one. But the question is, which ones are you ready to release and which ones are you more willing to embrace? Trust that. Trust your identity. What is your identity? How do you identify yourself? Look at those eyes in the background. It's just a very intense card. Um, enjoy uncovering everything about you. It also says you are currently realizing that you are not limited to previous identities you held. You are not what you used to be. You are not who you used to be. You may be going from student to teacher, teacher to um, administration, however you want to look at it, but something is changing. And even spiritually, something is changing for you. So physically, it's time to be ready. And if you're using negative self talk, if you call yourself stupid, I hate that word. If you call yourself dumb, fat, ugly, single, I ain't ever gonna find nobody, release those names. You call yourself brilliant, gorgeous, wonderfully, fearfully made. I am attracting abundance. I am getting the right kind of man that's going to what or woman, however you want to do it. Change that self-talk. Now, going right into what your soul level has got for you, this, I'm not even going to try to say his name, okay, because I can't say Pizzolatucci, okay? I probably said it all wrong. Someone's going to send me a mean email. I will, I will not reply if you do. <laughs> anyway, this is about vindication, revenge, and justice. There's something going on on a spiritual level for you that you're just like ready for justice to be served, okay? And, and this otter is ready to box, okay? <laughs> and if you have a court case, this card is like a good omen for a court case. It's great for court cases. It's similar to the justice card. A little bit about this card. In the Aztec story of the sun, daily died and in the west and resurrected in the east as vindication. Well, the sun lost a game, uh, an Aztec ball game with the knight, and so it got buried, right? His bones were buried in the underworld. underworld. Later, Lord of the Princes, which is right here in this card, all right, he's offering his um, offering on the altar. Um, the young son went looking for his dad's burial, which is the big son, his big daddy's son, right? Now, 
he went and found them and he was bringing them out and he stopped to hunt for food to nourish him on his journey. And when the bones connected again with the earth, the deer sprang up and raised to the north, the rays of the sun emanated in pelt, and he thus reversed the victory of night and day and earned his place in the spring sun, having vindication, vindicated his father's loss at the hands of night, okay? So it's just like a really interesting story. And so for me, this is what I kind of feel is like there might have been a part of you that was dead, okay? And then like the, your inner child is coming and seeing, no, we're not gonna die. We're going to be strong and we're going to do this. And it's pulling you out of your little hermitized area that you're in. And now it's time to get your bones together get out in the sun touch the earth and feel alive again so the forces of justice vindication revenge are at work vindication substitutes uh, substantiates your position and establishes your validity revenge brings the satisfaction of knowing that the wrong and unjust actions taken against you have not gone unpunished it's almost like you don't have to go and fight everything, Virgo. Just know that it's going to be handled. Just know that it's going to be taken care of, okay? Don't desire for the revenge. Just let justice take place. So I wanted to kind of clarify what the Lord of Princes kind of meant. And when the freaking chakra card came out again, I'm going to tell you this is a month of finding your balance. If you're overworking, it's time to have more fun. If you're playing too damn much, it's time to settle your ass down, okay? Go sit down, Virgo. You done played too much. Now, new moon is coming in with this. And we have the new moon coming in, I think, on the 14th. Where's my notes? I'll forget yeah, the new moon is on the 16th, and it's in Aries, all about being independent, okay? So then you have this peacock right there by the new moon. The wonderful thing about the peacock is that it eats poisonous berries. Virgo, you have been given poison, and you have still developed into the beauty and the grace that you are, all right? Now... New beginnings, fresh starts, new ideas, another ancestors. I'm telling you, ancestors are coming in. They're talking to you and they're giving you the messages. Are you willing to listen? This is about manifestation and focus. Use the new moon to birth your desires and use this month to get into balance and make sure things are going right, okay? Now, usually I pre-shuffle, and I thought I had, but I hadn't. So let's go ahead and bless the deck, and then we will cut it together and give it a couple of shuffles, okay? Says the list these cards for Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising for the month of April. Show us the energy that you have coming in for them and any other messages that you may have. Show us the energy that you have. Cutting the deck. Ha! Huh. Alright, so we have success and we have the Queen of Pentacles reversed. This is Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus energy. And you're looking at everybody else's success at times and wondering, why isn't that mine? Where there is no happiness or you're having everything and you still feel incomplete. And it's because you're doing too much and you need to sit your ass down and you need to take a damn vacation. Even if it's a staycation. And a staycation doesn't mean that you stay home and clean your house all day. A staycation means that you stay and you vacation. Okay? You need a break, Virgo. I'm getting tired already. <laughs> you just wore me out. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. Balance some chakras, my friend. Balance some chakras. First position, Queen of Wands. What? Spirit Guide. Five of Pentacles. Empress. Hmm. And there's that justice, baby. Justice will be served. Overall energy is the Ten of Arrows reversed. All right, let me get you in closer to that. There's going to have to be a lot of clarifiers because of all these people showing up. Whoever is going to court this month, congratulations because you're about to win that case. I'm going to drink some water on that. Oh, 
All right, so in the past, we have this Queen of Wands energy coming in. This can be your energy. This is you, like, being a fire starter, being the head of your company, laying it down, doing what you've got to do, initiating change. Or this is a person who's come to help initiate change, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries. I do want to see what was going on in the past with this person. It had to be something positive because they're upright, and she's looking towards the other women. So I feel like if you're working with a bunch of women or you're dealing with a bunch of women, y'all are all on the same page, and y'all are all focused on the same same goal at hand okay i'm gonna go with this sacred oracle three cards fell out which one is it number five let me see that was second one should it be reversed no so this is my he's going for speed this is going for distance you're probably dealing with a leo because it's a big big cat however man you had two cheetahs in there you are like hell bent on getting to where you gotta go you don't even i'm feeling like you're not stopping go you're not collecting 200 dollars. you're just bah, 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 vroom, and you're off and you're going which is not a bad thing you're going the distance you're doing what needs to happen you have your vision you have your goal and you're not stopping for anything anyone or anybody hmm pretty intense virgo i want to make sure that's all i want to tell you because i feel like there's more to it ha Remember, what is yours will never be withheld from you. Endurance, strength, and the long haul. If you're thinking this thing is about love, you're calling in a harmonious relationship or you're in one that's going to stand the test of time. Harmony doesn't mean like, oh, everything's always copacetic, but it's about learning how to play the music together. This is a relationship that will go the difference when it comes to prosperity. You are at a very good place. All your hard work and efforts will pay off. Okay, and I feel like you're running towards that ancestor. You're running towards that guy because in the present you have the carob of arrows. The carob of arrows has a deer in his hand. Remember, the deer came out in the prince of princes, the you know the sun god. So he, the deer has unconditional love, and it is a family message. Unconditionally love yourself this month because there's going to be a lot of information coming in. Also, look at all that yellow on the card. Lots of solar plexus. And I don't know if you need solar plexus when you're looking at your finances or at relationships because Gilgamesh has got his head on that bull, and it ain't getting up. Okay, so I kind of feel like you're going to need your guides to help you fight your fights this month and because you don't need to even get your hands dirty because justice is about to be served and everything's going to be a okay. There we go. So your guides going to talk to you from the native spirit. Then. Good Lord. Oh, no. I'm going to tell you, this is what came out. Prayer feathers and owl medicine. I ain't even trying to lie to you. Didn't we have the ancestor of the owls? Okay, and that's the one. You know, we ain't praying and giving it up to the tree. We about to say, whoo, our medicine is coming through. There is an ending. The Your guides have been showing you this. You had two owls that are showed up to you. Now, this owl has a very deep look. The, the other owl was just the drawing of the owl, the, the, the spiritual realm. I feel like this owl is like, look, I even came out in the damn dirty sunlight. Look at me. Like, notice me. Look at what I bring. Feel my energy. Know that there's some things that got to go. And understand that endings does not mean that it's over. It's just an opportunity for a new beginning. Now, this is wisdom, intuition, and clairvoyance. Ancient knowledge is coming into you because your ancestors are talking to you. Nurture your feminine spirit within you. Going right back to that otter otter energy the owl is the night eagle for it has the majesty of the eagle but works silently in the darkness of night when this card chooses you you're at a great time of illumination and transformation you've been working hard virgo because i mean you got the empress in here and she making the fool over here you got justice in there you have got the support to make things happen but you've got to let something die and that is the comparing your life to others and that ain't even in the cards i'm just letting you know now, the five of disc is telling you trouble. That's the hidden influence. That's what's hiding behind the corners, okay? Don't be afraid of failure. 
Also, watch your words this month because in this card, this is where Gilgamesh and the Fool, they go off and they like, ha, ha, we killed the bull, ha, ha, through the hind leg at the high priestess. The next day, the fool was dead, okay? Watch what you say because you can dig a ditch for yourself and you don't need to. And you see how his foot is on top of the, the, um, the bull's mouth? You need to watch what you say around the 22nd, okay? I think it's, a, is it the 20th? No, the 20th. Because that's when the sun enters Taurus. And that owl should not be out during the sun time, okay? Because he's a night eagle, right? So at the 20th, when the sun enters into Taurus, watch your words. And what else is happening around that time? Saturn's going retrograde and Pluto's going retrograde. You're going to have a lot of emotional things going on. You are the most analytical, <laughs> analytical sign I know. You guys make sure everything is right. The thing is, watch the way you say things because you may not mean them that way, but they're going to come out pretty jacked up. And also pay attention to where your money is going because there's some old habits that need to die. And usually I never talk about the sun and moving in but the sun literally is moving into Taurus, okay? Now, the advice is to sit your ass down and create something that's going to work for you, not against you. Because you are moving into an energy where things are about to play out. You got two ladies on their thrones and they are ready to rule, okay? Now, if you look at the back of the card, the Empress has a volcano back there. She don't give a damn. She's still working. The thing is, it does not matter what's going on around you. Look at all that green. That could be money. That could be heart space. That could just be creative, fertile energy. But something is being created. And I feel like that card needs to be clarified. Not from there. Not from there. I don't want to do that one. Oh, okay. Guys, I've never had this deck want to be used so damn much. I'm super excited. I think my relationship is building with it. I've only had it for four years, but finally working. <laughs> so you're getting Pyramid of Light. Step your vibration, step your vibration deeper into love. So really watching what you say. Look at all this solar plexus energy. Watch your digestion this month, um, Virgo. Make close attention to what you're putting in. Lots of greens, lots of waters. I think Leo got this also. But when I look at the, the pyramid of light, and it's like all this energy is shooting up out of you. You're just standing there. You have the eye of horse. It's going to be important that you protect your energy. Whatever you do to clear your energy, continue doing it. If you're not doing anything, you need to create something, wear something, do something that you're protecting your energy because this is for psychic protection. You are on freaking... I was going to say freaking fucking point, okay? That's where you're at, Virgo. You're on freaking fucking point. There's no other point of saying this. You, look at these two cards, how similar they are. There's everything about the sun, everything about that solar energy. You're growing. So as you're bright and as you're light, this is telling you, you're like spotlight. So you're going to attract good and you're going to attract negative energies. So protect yourself. Make sure that you're protecting your energy. Make sure you're protecting your home. Then it also says this indicates there's also thoughts and feelings and other energies around you that are not helping you. And with easy rituals or ways of cleaning, you will clear that fog, that brain fog, that indecision that you're unable to do because your outcome is justice being served. It's almost like the lights are coming on. And I know I get a lot of messages from Virgo that says, you always say that my life is going to change and it never does. And I usually send back, well, what have you changed? And then what? I get no response. Thank you. So in order for things to change, my friend, you have got to be that catalyst, 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 you have got to change. So if you have a bunch of negative self-talk going on in your head, nothing's going to come that's good. But right now, what, what, the, what the cards are telling you or what your guides are telling you, because you got a lot of ancestors around you, is work in your darkness to be the light. Don't shut it out because the owl is coming out. The owl is coming out in the middle of the daytime. And it is the night eagle. It's telling you, you have nothing to be ashamed of. You have worked really hard for this and enjoy your time of being acknowledged, okay? Now, justice is coming out. Justice will be served. This is a lot of Libra energy coming in, being fair. Good things are coming your way. 
I do want to clarify justice for you. Not from that deck. Oh, okay, from the tarot. I'm going a little bit long with you, Virgo. Sorry. All right, there's that Prince of Wands reversed. I'm going to tell you, in order to have justice be served, watch your actions, watch who you're associating with, and do not fly off the handle this month because there will be things that, that will be regretted. Trust all the red flags that you're seeing. Don't get yourself set up in self-sabotage. And when you feel that little gut feeling in your stomach for vindication with revenge, just allow the universe to handle it themselves. And as I'm thinking, if you were drawn to solar plexus energy on the chakra card, that is meaning that you can do meditations for that area and for all areas. But a lot of times working with solar, solar plexus energy, eat more yellow fruits and vegetables, light a candle, sit by a fire. Um, I am is a very strong um, mantra for that, okay? Like, I am great, I make great decisions, those kinds of things. Now, let's do your Jupiter and all of that because I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk. Where did it go? I thought I drew it for you. I thought I drew it for you, I guess I didn't. Let's see what's going on, guys, sorry. Okay, I'm having a lot of cards come out. Let's see which one it is. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So, you're getting Kalanish. Hmm. I haven't had this card in a long time. So, we have a lot of swan energy coming in in this card. To make sure I give you all the information from it. So, this is about alignment. Now, you remember? <laughs> you remember your chakras? This is about alignment. And then you have the chakras. Holy hell. Okay. Swans represent purity, beauty, grace, love, balance, and the ability to see in the future. The owl is the all-knowing. Now, on the 22nd, Pluto goes retrograde into Capricorn. So, to represent Pluto, it is talking about the underground cavern shown on this card represents your memory. While the water weaving through it has the power to align your energies and heal you. Now, look through the eyes of the closest swan on the card and dive deep within yourself to explore the memories of your past. Perhaps the event had a positive outcome that you missed before. For example, losing a particular person may have allowed you to join a new group of friends to heal your hurt, draw on the restorative power of water through meditating. The thing is, sometimes bullshit has to happen to have good shit in your life, okay? Like, you have to drop the zero to get a hero, but at the time you couldn't see it was a zero because he was your motherfucking hero, okay? But then once you drop that dead weight and you realize, oh my geez, this is really good. This new thing that just came into my life is wonderful, or now I have time to do this hobby that I really really enjoy and I'm meeting people who are like-minded that kind of stuff that's what Pluto may be bringing for you now Saturn is what's the present right now and it says your thoughts all have the potential to become manifest for good or for ill if you're wrestling with ideas about doing things differently then know that you need to give the situation time to come into better alignment before you act it would be worth sounding out somebody's neutral about your ideas. So before you come to this decision, before you come around, and these are the, the stones at Kalanesh. They're all like in a circular position, and they're they're around the Celtic cross of Kalanesh aligned under the lunar activity, okay? Now, so you're harnessing that lunar moon. I'm telling you, there's something about the moon for you. When the moon, when the moon and the sun transit, that is when you're feeling the energies the most. Take really good self-care of yourself, Virgo. I really feel like when the sun moves into Taurus, you're gonna you're gonna be like going through some stressful stuff. You're gonna be wanting to say things. And when that moon shifts, you're gonna feel very emotional, okay? Now, the upper world, which I'm relating to Jupiter, which is your blessing, has the constellation of Cygnus, the swan, the primary celestial focus here, also known as the Northern Cross. It has the shape of the Celtic cross, as above, so below. Could it be that purposely erected stones at Kalanash were situated above flowing waters deep in the earth, imbued with coded memories? No matter what struggles you face, bring about order and stability. 
from which you can move forward with confidence. When you're ready to do so, know that you're always at least two sides to every argument and idea, and the best decision for you can only come from understanding them both. Don't be afraid to take a stance, but inform yourself well before you do so. Hence the Five of Pentacles. Be very careful with what you say, but I'm telling you, you got to stand your ground. you got to stand up for what you believe in. Yes, but choose your words wisely. All right, big baby, that is your read. Big, big hugs, Virgo. I hope that this makes sense to you. I know a lot of times people get frustrated with me because I don't give, like, your boyfriend's cheating on you and things like that. But this read for you, Virgo, is very focused on being the initiator of change. And I'm telling you, your ancestors are around you. And the fact that you have the owl and the swan showing up, there's something about feathers. So if you're wondering if your ancestors are really talking to you, you may find feathers along your path. You may be going through your Instagram feed and start seeing these animals a lot. You might start noticing the rhino more than the owl or something. Something will show up to you. And when you start getting these messages, start feeling what's going on inside your tum tum, okay, and your solar plexus. Protect your energy and watch yourself. Don't be this hothead, okay? And don't deal with this hothead either. You need to protect yourself from this hothead because justice will be served either way. Alrighty, be blessed fam, take care, hit me up on the gram, hit me up on email, book your $20 reading now because they're about to end after Mercury goes direct. Love you all, big, big kisses on your cheeksters. Take care Virgo.